behavioral treatment of phobias. So we have learned the behavioral explanation of phobias. Now we're going to take that explanation and look at how that can be applied to create treatments based on the approach. So how can the behavioral approach treat phobias? So you're going to need to be aware of the systematic desensitization, in particular relaxation and the use of hierarchy and what flooding is. So you need to be aware of two different behavioral techniques. So systematic desensitization was developed in 1958 and it is the main behavioral treatment that is used for phobias. And there are three main sort of stages. So firstly, the patient is taught relaxation techniques. That is, they are taught ways in which they can help themselves relax when they encounter the phobic stimulus. So for example, breathing techniques, meditation techniques, muscle relaxing techniques. They are then asked to create a hierarchy of fear. Now the patient and the client do, um, the therapist do this together. And at the base of the hierarchy is the least feared scenario. And it moves all the way up to the most feared scenario. So for example, if a person has a phobia of a dog, the least fed scenario might be looking at a picture of a dog it then might move to looking at a video or recording of a dog then it might move up to being in a room with a dog um, touching a dog allowing a dog to sit on your lap then the third stage is that the client works through the hierarchy now when they become anxious and stressed they use the relaxation techniques that they have used to help themselves calm down. If they reach a level and they are unable to complete it, the session will end and they will restart the next session at that stage in the hierarchy. So, in this example, we're gonna to have to talk about how phobias could be treated using systematic desensitization and it's important that we relate it back to that situation so why um, having a fear of cats so firstly we would talk about maybe being taught relaxation techniques such as muscle relaxation breathing techniques that she can apply when she encounters the hierarchy so the hierarchy of fear needs to be drawn up that's the next stage so it, giving clear examples of relating that to the phobia of cats so it could be looking at a picture of a cat then looking at a video of a cat holding a toy cat um, walking the street where the cats are um, being in the same room as a cat working all the way up to holding and feeding and stroking a cat then she will work through that hierarchy gradually, being in a relaxed state with the exposure. So she will move up the hierarchy when she has reached a state of relaxation in response to that phobic stimulus. It is hoped that the bond between the conditioned stimulus and the conditioned response, so the cat and fearfulness, will be extinguished, extinguished between the relaxation techniques and she will overcome her phobia of cats. So if we were to look at evaluation, it was found to be particularly effective in treating spider phobias and it is suitable for a range of people including those with learning difficulties. So it is effective and it is appropriate. However, it might only be effective in a therapeutic situation. So when the person is with the therapist and they are being taught and encouraged to use the relaxation techniques, it may not actually be that they can apply what they have learned during those sessions into the real world and it might not actually be effective in real world situations. So for example, you might get some past paper questions or example questions similar to this, explain one weakness of the systematic desensitization, briefly evaluate systematic desensitization. Flooding. So flooding attempts to remove phobias by having the person directly 
face their phobic stimulus. Okay, it works by flooding the client with fear and helping them lower their arousal to that phobic stimulus until they feel calm in the presence of the stimulus. Now, typically they are taught relaxation techniques before they are subjected to facing their phobia directly. And they use those techniques whilst they are in the presence of the most feared stimulus that they can think of. And it is hopeful that those techniques will help them calm down and they will extinguish that phobia. Now, it can be more effective and quicker than systematic desensitization. So that might be that is more appropriate for certain people. It's certainly a lot more cost effective. However, it is very traumatic, which means that people might not actually complete all the sessions that they need to, which reduces the effectiveness of the treatment. Now, in terms of um, password of questions, we might have something that is like this. Discuss uh, one reason why systematic desensitization might be more successful in treatment phobias than flooding. So this is asking you to actually compare the two. So systematic desensitization might be more successful as people are gradually introduced to their phobias. As a result, there is a higher completion rate and people are more likely to complete the sessions. Whereas with flooding, people are confronting their phobias directly and it is very traumatic and they are less likely to complete the sessions. In terms of essay questions, you might get an outline evaluate one or more behavioural treatments of phobias. So it's up to you whether you do systematic desensitisation in lots of detail or you do both systematic desensitisation and flooding. If you were to do both, I would suggest that you structure your essay in terms of AO1 for systematic desensitisation. So you explain what it is, give examples to support your knowledge and understanding, then evaluate it in terms of your AO3, so strengths and weaknesses of systematic desensitization. Then I would go to my AO1s of uh, flooding, so what flooding is, what how it works, and then go into evaluating flooding.